live and we're meeting people whose decision to listen to their intuition, their inner voice, change their lives forever. It's a theme at the heart of the new HBO Max documentary. It's called Call Me Miss Cleo, which pulls back the curtain on the larger than life TV psychic who rose to great fame in the late 90s. You probably remember those commercials. Call me now. Miss Cleo was the spokeswoman for the Psychic Readers Network. It was one of those call-in services which ultimately took in a billion dollars by allegedly preying on people looking for spiritual guidance, many of them desperate for information. Well, the network came under fire for deceptive and fraudulent practices, much of the blame unfairly, though, falling on the star. While in reality, Ms. Cleo was not the owner of the company, she was just the pitch person, and she was unknowingly, according to her friends, being used as a tool in an enterprise targeting customers. Take a look. Miss Cleo was a psychic advisor, and she read tarot cards. If anyone watched TV after midnight, you knew who Miss Cleo was. The best entertainment I could possibly imagine. She had such a presence. <laughs> they didn't just want to hear about the future. They wanted what she gave. She gave you the truth. But not everyone had the same experience. The U.S. government really brought the hammer down against Miss Cleo for defrauding consumers. She was born in Los Angeles. She created this Miss Cleo character, which had a Jamaican accent. There were a lot of people making money from this. And the more money they made, the more money they wanted. As far as the company profits, Miss Cleo it didn't appear she was getting any of that. A lot of her life was such a mystery. Wow. Joining us now is the co-director of Call Me, Miss Cleo, Celia. Anna Scovich, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, all, over the holiday break, like a lot of people, I get on, you know, I start looking at what's streaming and this doc pops up, Miss Cleo. I went in thinking, what I think a lot of people thought is that she profited, she got busted, and she was the mastermind behind all of this. And in fact, the documentary reveals a heartbreaking story. Um, Miss Cleo passed away in 2016 at the age of 53. She died of colon cancer. And so this is from the perspective of her friends who feel that they need to clear the air. Yeah, I think there was a hope to sort of um, breathe new life into her legacy and get the real story out there. I remember when these charges came against the Psychic Network and I vividly remember a script that I was supposed to read and it said, well, Miss Cleo didn't see that coming. She'd become the joke that people had targeted her, and that forced her to become a recluse. She couldn't go anywhere, and she carried this great pain of people believing she was a fraud. Was she a fraud? You know, I think it's really easy for us to sort of uh, take in the narratives we're fed to us, right? And that was part of why we wanted to make the film. Raven Simone says in the beginning of our film, what's the real deal? Yeah. And I think that was sort of an overarching question of the film. Um, we don't sort of tell you what to believe about Cleo in the film, but we want you to ask more questions. We want you to challenge those ideas that we think that we have and understand, you know, when it comes to Cleo, that there was a whole, as you said, fraud fraudulent enterprise behind her. She was really just the fall guy. Right, and, and you know, there were two men who were behind the company um, whose names most people don't know, and they were the ones who profited. She said at one point she only made $1,000, and there were billions being made from this company. Yeah, that first commercial she did, I think she made $1,750. And wow. I mean, we can probably all here recite that commercial by oh. heart. We've all seen it so many times. You do have clips of an interview because when she did become a recluse, she didn't do a lot of TV. She didn't talk a lot. And, and she did a few interviews. Her real name was Ure Del Harris. Um, she was taken in by a family. She believed that she had a gift. She believed in that gift. And she says her intention was to help people. Let's take a look at the clip. You know, on television, they wanted me to appear like I had just arrived on the scene straight out of Bush. Well, that wasn't the case. I was educated. I actually had uh, a higher up tell me one time, well, don't tell them you went to an all girl boarding school. Why not? Well, we really don't want people, you know, to think that, you know, what, that I'm educated. She was a person that suffered for the way she looked, the way she spoke, because she would not 
silence herself from what her truth was. This is the story she told all of us, but we'll never know how much of it is true. Truth is dimensional, my dears. It is not one dimensional, it is multi-dimensional. And that is why the cards work. The big question a lot of people had, and it, I, it was unsolved to me when I saw the documentary, is she Jamaican? That was at the core of a lot of this. So that is the question that everyone asks me uh, when I tell them I've made a film about Miss Cleo. And what I'll say, first of all, I didn't know that was one of the clips you were gonna pick, but that line where Cleo says, truth is not one dimensional, it's multi-dimensional, is probably my favorite line of the film. And I think it speaks to her whole story. I think, you know, Miss Cleo was part uh, creation, part hopeful dream. She put, took bits from Uri Del Harris, bits from herself, bits from a life of sort of necessity. For me, Cleo's story is about a world that's often hostile to people that don't fit within its molds. So was she Jamaican? Um, I think that is still up for debate from people in our film. Yeah, no, it's, it's debated <laughs> um, in the film. But one of the things that she did do before she passed away, she decided to reveal that she was a member of the LGBTQ plus community. And in the documentary, we learn a lot about her personal journey uh, in that world. And in the latter part of her life, she became an advocate for the community and accepted by that community. Yeah, I think when we're talking about the real Cleo and who the real Cleo is, I think that era of her life was when she was most sort of true to herself. Mm. And it's so tragic that she died so quickly after she was coming into sort of the, the time when she was finally able to be her real self and own who she was. Um, but she did such amazing things toward the end of her life. And and this is uh, her partner, Luann. This is her partner, Luann, who's yeah. in the doc. Before I let you go, because I, I just want to point out the two men who ran that company, Stephen Fetter, Peter Saltz, charges against them, FTC filed charges. Miss Cleo's name was taken out of those charges. Um, but all the billions made, she died penniless? She died, you know, she was living with roommates. She was, uh, she was not someone who, uh, as Raven says, had a bag at the end of her life. She, she simply didn't. So many profited, but she did not. Wow, it is a compelling documentary. Thank you so much for coming on and talking about it. I'm telling you, if you're looking for something to watch, check out Call Me Miss Cleo. It is streaming on HBO Max now.